do you know those like know-it-all people that always have the answer for everything and always think they know everything and or always one up your story like you're like I fell down and and jammed you know two of my fingers today they're like I fell down and jammed 11 of my fingers and you're like really I don't even think you have 11 fingers but you know those people I think I slightly struggle <laughs> with being a know-it-all I secretly want to one up if I don't actually maybe do it. I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah, no. I mean, I'm just being real. I obviously have something to say about everything. I mean, I feel like I do. I, I, yeah. So these are all my own personal struggles. And I don't want to be those people because when you're around those people, I'm like, oh, wow, they're annoying. I don't want to be annoying. I'm kind of annoying. I know that. Okay. I'm working on it. Um, so it, I thought it was ironic. I titled this like, uh, uh, see, I'm doing a new thing. And I'm like, I'm wearing something two days in a row. Like I never do that. Really? I love something new, you know, that's why I have a shopping problem. Cause new is always better. And sometimes new is like, not at all better. Sometimes like the old steady, the one that always looks good, always looks good. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's great or it looks good. Um, but I really wanted to wear this hat again because it brings me such great joy because quite honestly, I believe that this, not this hat, but what it says, revival, is the answer to everything. That it's going to solve everything. <laughs> that all the woes and ills and the craziness in the world right now is just God setting the stage to do something radically new, different, wild, and uh, like an utter, they're calling it the third great awakening, um, a reformation, um, a Holy Spirit revival. I, I'm hearing it like from all these different um, leaders all over the world. And every time I hear it, I'm like so excited. I'm like, yes, revival, revival. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. And so uh, I read this quote today that I had written down and I, so I don't have the source. It was just on a piece of paper. I was trying to tidy up because I'm about to have people over in a little bit and I need to tidy up. And, and it said, if you don't open your mouth, how can I put the words in it? And I was like, Oh, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm always asking God to help me like every time before I get up here and start chattering away to you. I always pray and go, okay, God, you got to give me the words. You got to put the words in my mouth. You got to help me. You got to lead me. You got to guide me. You got to tell me what to say. You got to put it in my mouth. And I read that quote and it just really hit me. Like, I just felt like I wasn't, like I haven't said what I really want to say. What I'm really obsessed with, what I started a prayer group about, um, over a year ago now, way over a year ago, was about this, was about revival. That that's actually my most passionate subject. That that's the thing I love. That that's the thing I think is coming and that, that God is going to just like blow everybody's minds even more when he shows up and does this new thing. And I just realized that I haven't talked that much about it on here and why. Is it fear? Am I afraid? Because it's kind of like this buzzword that kind of separates different um, walks of Christianity and faith. And like Holy Spirit is like a word that people are like, oh, well, how do you feel about the Holy Spirit? You know, what camp are you in? You know, and it's like, oh, what? I'm in the, I read the Bible and I read the Bible camp. <laughs> That's the one I'm in. Um, so for some reason, finding, coming across that piece of paper, I don't know who said it. I don't know where it was. Uh, I don't know. I just know that I wrote it down because it obviously got me. And it got me again when I read it today. And I just thought, okay, I'm opening my mouth a lot, but am I really saying the things I really want to say? So I bought a hat that says it for me. <laughs> revival, 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 revival. Because that's where I think like the unity is going to come in. That's where I think God's going to do something new and, and make real huge changes um, all over the world. Like I, I don't think it's just like, um, uh, like people that used to have what they would call revivals in a tent, a tent revival. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the groundbreaking um, 
God does something totally new. Like there's a total new revelation that's given to people about another aspect of God. Because the reality is we only get these teeny little bits and pieces about God at, at different times. Um, you know, uh, Martin Luther's uh, Reformation with the, what is it, 10,000 Thesis. I mean, it was groundbreaking at that time. Like, and that was a new revelation of God. That was the first great Reformation, I think. I need to, I should have read up on my history a little before I started today. Oh, well. So I decided to be in a new location. It's beautiful outside and um, uh, everybody is mowing under the sun. So I couldn't actually stand outside. So this is, this is about as outside as it gets, um, the room I'm in. So that's my new thing. Um, but so I wore this hat today and uh, again, and I ran into somebody and they said something, they go, yeah, I, I think in a year or so, things will have calmed down and, and it'll go back to the way it is or something like that. And I was pretty dumbfounded uh, that this person said that. And I, I couldn't not say something in return. I couldn't not say, This, this is going to do the new thing. We're never going to go back to the way it used to be. Things are probably never going to calm down. We can't be grasping for this old normal that no longer exists. It doesn't. It's gone. It's the past now. And God's going to do a new thing. And we got to look to him as the answer He's the only answer to all our woes and all our problems and all our fears and all our um, all the things that are going on in society and our government and everywhere. It's all Jesus is the answer. He's the only answer. He's the only one that's going to save us all. Like not not anybody else. It's it's only Jesus and only God are the only ones that are going to show up and absolutely transform us for the better. And, and yeah, it might uh, be ugly and it might hurt for a little while and things might get worse. But the reality is we know the end of the story. If you're a Christian, you know Jesus won. He conquered death. He did it on the cross. He's going to come again. That's the answer. We already know how this story ends. And, and that's where we got to put our faith and our hope and our confidence and our firm foundation has to be in him, not in Oh, well, so-and-so, they're going to incorporate a new, you know, no, no, no. Jesus is the only answer. And, and I am looking forward to, to what he's going to do and how he's going to move. And, and I just know that it's coming and soon that I get to see it, that I in my lifetime get to see it. And so I'm going to wake up every day going, is this the day, God? Is this the day? Is this the day? <laughs> yes. You know, because it could be. Isaiah 43, um, I'm going to start at 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I, and not some foreign God among you, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? And then jump down to 18. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the waste land. So Lord, help us to see it. Help us to perceive it. Help us to be excited for what you're going to do next in our lives and all over the world. And, and help us to stop looking at the things we don't like with fear and trepidation and, oh no, what's next? You know, what new policy? What new da da da? No, 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 no. Let's keep our eyes focused on you and the hope we have in you and help us to, to, to say that when someone's like, oh, well, burr, 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 burr. No, 
I want to have the, I want to say the answer is Jesus. The answer is him and only him. And that's the thing we have to look forward to that we can't. Yeah. There's some girl that her line is no one's coming to save you. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Jesus has already saved you. You just got to run to him. You just got to go to him. You got to look to him. You got to ask. You got to say, okay, God, I'm here. Show me the new thing. Help me perceive it. I want to see the water and the wasteland. I want to see the streams in the desert, Lord. If you are in a desert, ask him to show you the streams because they're there and they're coming. So Lord, we ask you to move. We ask your Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come. Save us all. Do a new thing in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, in our churches, in our houses, um, in our marriages, in our kids, in our, do a new thing everywhere, a good new thing. Help us to perceive it as good, no matter what it is and how it begins. In your name we pray, amen.